put it a little louder. Bill says yes, someone says no. Bill, I go with the better looking one. <laughs> Welcome, thank you so much for coming out for Six Foot Swells Press and our release of Savage Melodies and Last Call Serenade. <laughs> There's 32 poets in this book from all across the United States, a lot from the region right here, a lot that are, are, are in the house tonight, and I, you know, they're the best of the best, and each one of them, when I went through this, I would want to read the poem again. More importantly, I would want it on my own jukebox at home, so that's the most important thing. What I would like to do is start out with, who just said, oh God? <laughs> Annie! Annie! I would like to start out with a uh, toast to Julie Valen because actually without her, this book would not have gotten better. Julie, where are you? Julie, where's she at? I said, without you, the book would not have come to completion. Thank you. So I won't give you a I do not do this to make any money. We make it just enough so we can publish the next book. And um, there you go. So obviously, by the way I'm dressed, uh, we don't make a lot of money off this, but we have a good time. So. What's the next book? Jesus, man. Uh, <laughs> Savage Melodies and Last Call Serenades. We just whipped it up that quick for you. This book came out of an obsession that, that I have and that I share with Julie and... Um, some call, have called me a music snob o over the years, which I wear proudly because uh, I do know music very well, mo better than most of you out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty fucking so arrogant. Huh? <laughs> music has always been, been there for us, especially then once when poetry got intermingled in the backseat of it all, which poetry and music have always flown together in all of their um, low-lit ways, and this book came out when we start to remember what was that last song, you know, that we first danced to, that last song that we went into the back seat of someone's car to, that what was that song that was playing when we signed the divorce papers, you know, <laughs> and so it's true, when we want to be with someone, we either write them a poem or we make them a mix. And so that's what this book is. Um, so, we're going to start the evening off, and I will start with Matt Amat, because the press was started with myself and Julie and Matt. Matt is way up in Portland right now. And uh, yeah, you can give him a round of applause. Matt would appreciate that. He is doing research. Every place that has Pat's Blue Ribbon, he is doing research. <laughs> Here's the first poem. Madama. Jukebox. Strolling from bar to bar, lured to the neon glow, I crisscross the streets, focused on a song. I check each jukebox before I order. No, man, this won't do, this won't do at all. My thirst grows as my patience dwindles. At the end of the evening in a deserted tavern, at the end of the block, I find the lonely player still filled with vinyl. I stuff it full of quarters, guaranteed an hour's worth of play. As my first of many beers arrive, the needle drops, filling an empty room and an empty heart with the only song that won't remind me of her. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Show the poets that you're having a good time tonight. You never know what will happen after we leave here. <laughs> And this was a request uh, from A.D. Winans. He requested that I read his poems, so I'm going to. He's out of San Francisco, and we were very honored and happy to have him submit these, and um, you'll see why now. Poem for Patty. My woman chain smokes, fucked by the teeth of jazz. She leads me to her midnight room where we pick up the jazz with locked limbs, rocking, jamming a duet of flesh rhythms. Jazz doing her dance up and down my spine as we lose ourselves in sightless sound, feeling like a drunk Jesus walking on water. <laughs> Jesus! One more from A.D. Lena Horne. The lady is a tramp, rings out in my head. 
White hot lightning from her velvet cords. Each note a shooting star reverberates through my cells. The lady is a tramp. The lady is a vamp. The lady is a wonder. The lady speaks with thunder, sends chills down my spine, leaves me shivering like a woman coming down from a climax. Mm. There you go. Oh, And now to start things off, we have given him his rightly due of 45 minutes. <laughs> He's always busy, but we got him out of his busy schedule to attend this, and I'm so glad for it. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Gaynor. <laughs> said I could go at least 20. He said there was a couple people that Annie wasn't going to read her full time. So I could have it. But, but, Todd did call me. What the other night? As he does before these events often. And I don't know what the deal is. But he says, why don't you spend a couple of minutes and write a new poem for the event? It's just something special. So I said, okay, spacious, spacious. And um, so I wrote a universal poem. This is a universal poem. And actually, I want to dedicate it to my dear friend, Molly Fitzgerald. For those of you who don't know, it was her birthday yesterday. Oh, so this is for Molly. Short poem, universal poem. I actually wrote a couple of these. July. July is her month, the 16th to be exact. I wonder how quiet she was on arrival. She hasn't been since. <laughs> for Molly Fisk. And as I said, this is a universal poem. <laughs> and if somebody else would like to use it at some time, do feel free. <laughs> but I do want to do a little poem just for Todd. Because mm, right as you may or may not know, Todd's birthday is coming Tuesday. Ah. So, here we go. July. <laughs> <laughs> July is his month, the 20th to be exact. I wonder how quiet he was on the right. He hasn't been since. <laughs> Anybody else in July you'd like to mention? There's a sweet gal back there. Couple of them over here. I'll put you on the list. There's one there. We love those cancers. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Okay. This is a sweet, sweet poem from my much younger days. It's called Dancing to Cowboy Love Song. Yes, that's what you got. When it's done, you guys go, ooh. I like that. I really like it. It's good fun. She stands on her tiptoes, presses her cheek softly to yours. Her hair is scented with romance, and her breath drips warm invitations down the side of your neck. And as you dance, you wonder how tight is too tight to hold her when dancing the cowboy love songs. They sing about tumbleweeds, campfires, love gone wrong, barefooted Mexican women, and gunfights that no one wins. And when, get, and when they get to the place where the cowboy lies dying, you wonder, you know it's about over. And you want to say, I love you. Instead, you whisper, thanks for the dance. And hope she doesn't hear the sound of your heartbreak as she dances from you and into another cowboy's love song. John, I'll give you a copy later, John. It looks like it's working. Patron of the arts. You guys know, well, some of you know. Some of you don't know. 
Pay attention. Quit looking in the mirror. You're watching the nose pickers, aren't you? <laughs> That's what I thought when I was sitting back there, too. There are a few. A patron of the arts. True story. Mill Street, Grass Valley. You wouldn't think a ukulele and a harmonica would go together. They don't. <laughs> The cardboard sign hanging from his neck says, anything would help. He's right. <laughs> he nods as you reach into your pocket, winks when you drop a couple of coins into a can at his feet, and keeps right on playing as you walk away. Another patron of the arts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Morning in the town, huh? Winding it down. Uh, I'm going to read the book poem. 30 seconds. And, and, and the other poem that he requested. Yeah. He does this. The rest of us 20 seconds. It's called The Book of Love. <laughs> the Book of Love. Thought about writing a novel, calling it The Book of Love. Titling the chapters after the women I love. It'll be a short book. <laughs> They're only, I only have to use your name. Uh, I blew that. I should read it again. Should, uh, I should, I blew that. I should read it again. I was sidetracked. No one else was Bill. I was sidetracked. Okay, Texas nights. Here, this starts the night right here. All right, make it generous. Are you guys ready? Texas nights. Stratocasters dripping whiskey, wine, and gin into the night. Twisted strings tight enough to make the deaf dogs weep. Pounding desire into the souls of sweet little church girls and making skinny white boys think they know the blue. <laughs> it's Stevie Ray Vaughan. It's, it's another night with Stevie Ray Vaughan, one filled with Texas blood's crossroads and talking sweet to the big girls. The ones with those tight skirts, tight enough to let you know that something wants out, tight enough to let you see what temptation looks like, tight enough to show the tops of those cinnamon-colored stockings. That's where Sensual lives, at the tops of those cinnamon-colored stockings, just above sin right below redemption. It's there the dead rock stars and weathered Stratocasters come to life. It's there that the click of a high heel shoe, like an overdraft dude transfusion, taps life into a midnight dance floor. It's there that Stevie Ray Vaughan scatters stars across the Texas night. And it's there that a weathered Stratocaster pounds romance full of whiskey, wine, and gin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. precisely it. This is your opportunity as an audience to make us fragile ego poets feel good for just a short time. So keep all that applause and yell, shout, do whatever you like. It'll all happen. One thing I forgot to mention, which we're really proud of, is that Six Foot Swells Press is, we, we believe, go above and beyond any other small press that's actually happening or, um, or going out there today. And I'll tell you why because we actually have our own brewery now. So, we do have Six Foot Swell Press, After Hours Poetry, and Brewery. And on each of these labels, there's a poem of mine, or Julie's, or it could be one of yours someday. Where's Marilyn? Yeah, send him along. But, we are very proud. Matt Wentz, thank you very much. Give a toast to Matt. You gotta admit, that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Oh God. But it's a mission from God, that's right. Our next reader was published by Six Foot Swells Press with the wonderful book title of Sex on Earth. And as soon as she comes up here, you will see why. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Irving. Woo! Remember making love to Bolero? Hypnotic, repeti 
love to bolero, hypnotic, repetitive phrases, repeated endlessly, endlessly multiplied desire till the final climax thunders. RCA album, Charles Monk conducting Boston Symphony, Scarlet, let, Scarlet Letter Red Cover, Bolero in Bold White, 795. 13 and a half minutes. 13 minutes is like forever to 18. Just a few of us at first the Bolero Underground. But soon, 100th Monkey wagged his tallywhacker. PSU Radio aired it constantly, mesmerizing minds in training libidos. Everyone fucked to Bolero. It wafted along the upstairs hallways of Sigma Phi, drifted over garden walls, seeped out the cracked windows of parked cars. Whenever you heard that refrain, you knew someone was doing it. <laughs> Sex permeated the atmosphere, riding the airwaves, and we couldn't get enough. Then, suddenly, it stopped, went out of fashion. Lust found other tunes to screw to. But last night, Pandora pulled Bolero from her magic box of tricks, blew every synapse, held us captive 13 and a half minutes. It didn't seem long at all. So we played it again. <laughs> I hope to have you put Bolero in that next time. Okay, this one didn't make it in the book, but I'm going to read it anyway. It's called, Oh Lord, Ain't It Hard to Be Humble, or How I Stopped Hating Country Music and Learned to Love Merle Haggard. <laughs> 1972, and we're living the expat life in Ecuador, hanging with the hippies, hobnobbing with local gentry. I am a gringo goddess. They love fertile mamas here. And I have a son whose hair glows copper in the equatorial noon. A daughter so beautiful, I'm tempted to shave her head to ward off jealous angels. When I walk downtown, bouncing my full breasts, Tossing my naturally curly hair, men hiss at me, whispering, Reina, Reina, Queen, Queen, under their breath. Do I miss suburban labyrinths, political doublespeak, shopping malls, traffic champs, country music? I hate country music. Country music is rednecks, bad rhymes, Gomer piles, Stucky's pecan shops, moon pies, and Confederate flags. It's gay men beat to death in city parks, little black girls burned in Sunday school, backstreet abortions, all the KIAs and MIAs who never came home again. Homesick is not a word in my vocabulary. Though, I do admit, things get a little quiet from time to time south of the equator. So when the Silver Slipper Salon, Saloon opens in downtown Quito, of course, we check it out. We wander onto a movie set, red velvet drapes, scarlet carpet, ivory painted booths and padded bar stools, a bee western brothel with jukebox, but by God, the beer is cold. Oki from the Skokie blasts to my heart like a hurricane. Next thing, I'm sobbing in my brew, big salty tears of lonesome, missing Arizona sunsets, a braid of red rock canyons, sequoia that touch the sky, and cornfields high enough to hide an elephant. Miss hearing English spoken everywhere in a land where everyone walks the way I walk, gets Johnny Carson's jokes, and wraps me in anonymity so familiar, nobody ever has to give me a second glance. I miss home. That night I get it. Like it or not, my vaunted singularity is just illusion. I am conglomerate, melting pot, race, gender, class, country. Now I sing along with Merle, Tammy, Johnny, Hank, Willie, and the Dixie Chicks. It's roots, baby. Maybe a little twisted. Maybe a little strange. But all mine. Yeah! Now that is proof 
that six foot swells definitely is open to two sums and three sums and whatever else that we can do to help each other out. So very good. <laughs> Whose is this? It's mine. Oh, you want to leave it right here? We'll leave it right here until you get up here. Next up, oh yeah. In her poem, there was something about mounds of ice cream. Ladies and gentlemen, from down the hill, Leslie Bailey. This is called uh, Two for the Road. I order a shot of tequila and a Dos Equis when the pants walk in. Yeah, I know there's a man in them. And I'm sure he has pretty eyes, but I don't have time for details. I need action. I check myself out in the Budweiser mirror, looking like two scoops of ice cream with mascara on top. Perfect. I spin around twice to make the room stop and saunter over, hair bouncing, hips swinging to the jukebox. He looks me up and down, tells me I have a nice pair, and up. Uh, that's good enough for me. Bartender, two for the road. <laughs> Glass slippers scatter as she speeds, dark, never dark, never striking midnight, horsepower vibrating under her summer gown, underwear, optional, princes <laughs> need not apply. <laughs> sexy, but you guys get it anyway. <laughs> yeah, still working on it. Um, it's called A Thousand and One Days. Arabia doesn't wait for the night. It punishes me under the noonday sun, taunting. Scheherazade shimmers, deconstructing Lady Macbeth's meaning without words. Lucifer and I enter the gentleman's club on the corner of 18th and Capitol. He tells me business is slow. Too many resistors, not enough hot chicks. Damn immortality, all the good ones are dead. As usual, Jesus is late, ordering smoked tri-tip watermelon and red wine. He forgives all those who trespass against us. Tempting, the evening breeze makes me absurd with good fortune. Einstein squares the root of happiness. Jesus buys another round. Shakespeare whispers, the cursed cow jumps. Give Leslie another hand. At least half of y'all have to like scoops of ice cream, so that's always good. So how far down the hill was that? <laughs> Roseville. It's a good thing in the bios, if you buy the book, we all have our addresses in the direction. <laughs> yeah, the last times we're visiting. Oh, now we have the moment I've been waiting for. The, 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 the absolutely proudest part of this book for me was the fact that I got to publish Sue McGillicott and her ma and Menna Broker. Yes. And tonight both of them are going to read, and Sue's going to go first. <laughs> Turning, twisting, thumping that bass string as the girl moves her hips back and forth, left to right, to the sound of passing trains in a subway. Dripping the wet hanky she left in her pocket for hot days like this. Listening to all she knows here in the subway where she's turning and twisting and showing her underpants while spinning here in the subway where it's hot and she's wet. <laughs> You got one more. You don't? All right, well, write one and you can end the show. Okay. And of course, now we're going to go right into Annie, I Love You. Ladies and gentlemen, and Men and Broker. Thank you. And so, you were wonderful. Uh, congratulations to Six Foot Swells Press, 
to Todd, to Julie, you guys did a great job. And to <laughs> Paul and I'm in there with you guys. It's good to be in there with you. Um, Oh, yes. I love you too. And this is really historic. I'm in yes. the same book with my daughter. Woo. We've never read together before. She's never read before. Woo. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> anyway, it's a real pleasure. Uh, I've got a small poem here. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of sex. It doesn't have any sex in it. Sorry, oh. Todd. <laughs> Oh, no, I got it. Uh, it's, it's an uplifting poem, though, and there's a guitar in it. Saving the Drowning Bees. Somewhere in the Southwest, where people carry moonscapes in their lunch buckets and extraterrestrial beings in their pockets, a man plays guitar to the chickens and geese, to the coyote, to the inside of his home, lined with books and papers, to the shadows of his lesser fears. A yellow bowl of water holds up several dying bees. A girl dips her hand and sets them down on the earth. She is not stung. Who would have thought to save a drowning bee? Uh, I also want to thank two dear friends for coming up from the Bay Area, who I'm sitting with there. I know they hate me for it. <laughs> thank you, Joyce and Barry. Moving. The memory is sweet and embraceable. The slow hands all over dance with the turn on of your life, pressing lips to your soft ear. People all around making touch more exciting. A soft sweater, a rough hand. Something in the way you move, making the room too warm. A trumpet blowing out its sex. Confetti falling on everyone. The floor is too small. The world is too big. Thanks. Aren't you proud of your little girl? Yeah. Aren't you proud of your mom? I am. Yes. See, six foot swells brings families together. <laughs> so won't you please do it? <laughs> yeah, please. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have the honor of um, introducing this cat here, who's probably going to go way up and down and, and all around and you know and you really it's five minutes baby but uh, you know it's going to be the best five minutes that you all have ever spent yeah. ladies and gentlemen a nevada county legend chris, chris olander yeah. Yeah. so you know you just about to see this is that the light no Okay, so uh, when I was younger, I was probably, uh, doing all this guitar stuff and writing all these songs, and, and one of the big influences was the blues players and that. This is a, uh, this is taken from a uh, Mississippi John Hurt little rhythm. It's called uh, Stir Fry Blues. Now, I'll see if I can do it without the guitar. We'll see. <laughs> <clears throat> Got to go and do what you got to do, and now I'm missing out on a stir fry too. 
I said, I got a baby doing what you got to do. I asked sister brother, what you gonna do when your baby left you with stir fry blue? <laughs> well, the morning sunshine painted in my eyes. I can't help thinking who she waking with today. I pour rum in my coffee, got bloodshot eyes. Since my baby left me, got morning stir fry blue. <laughs> I said, stir Shake a little bit of Well, you can listen to what anybody got to say. Blue sky shining to earn your pay. See a buddy, find a honey, doesn't matter what you got to do. You got to lie, just pass the day. Till you find the honey going to cook up the stir fry, you got to pay. Yeah. But you catch up on the doings going down today. People shine love, both pay to play. Talk about town, stay street, smart, sly. Play the part in your heart. You got no money. Your love's homemade. Your stir fries cooking for another lover. You got stir fly blues night and day. <laughs> stir fries and shake a little bit of. <laughs> yeah. You can mix anything you want to eat. Honey garlic spice or simmer till sweet. Pile on the sprouts, you got a balanced meal, a vegetarian treat. But I like a little meat. <laughs> Fill up your tummy and laugh till you squeal. You'll be cooking up a dish of stir fry too. I said, stir fry. <laughs> Sweet and saucy, salty salsa. Uh -huh. Well, eat your honey stir fry for an all night fun, then walk up broad in the morning sun. Nobody business where my stir fry's from. A clear Mountain Dew or maybe something new. Ball holla hall to the African drums. You got no honey stir fry, you got them. Stir fry blue! Everybody's bound to eat a little bit of stir fry sometime too. So trouble, man. You want to be desperate because you'll do anything for anything. <laughs> so here we go. This is called Desperation Line. Well, I was all alone, empty of my bones, so I walked on down by the station. Well, it began to rain. Along came a train, so I climbed aboard with the wind. We were rolling along, then her song saw her lick her lips and smile at me. <clears throat> well, a little small talk, and we took a little walk on back to the rear of the train. Well, I was talking rhymes, riding smooth lines, and the sun was a failure in the west. We were flying high, and my mouth sure got dry speeding together in that moonlight. But in the midnight air, blowing through our hair, she slid up, oh, so close. Then she gave me a kiss. Well, I knew what I'd miss, my muscle throbbing like the engine up front. Oh, she was hot. Oh, I was sot like a well-oiled tool. She took it in stride. Me, I enjoyed my ride rock and rolling over those tracks. Ah, but then it got tough. Well, the riding got rough. We started climbing over desert hills. Well, my head spun around, started falling down, looked for eyes, and she was gone. Well, around a bend, I was near my end. I could feel I was losing my grip. Then I saw her again. She had five more men, each with a ticket for a train. Well, I called for help. She let out a yell, kicking with a foot in my gut. Yeah, I fell from the train, and then I felt the pain rolling over and over and over and over and over, over the desert rock. <laughs> yeah, it hit me hard. Left me scarred riding on that desperation and blind. <laughs> <laughs> You can, hopefully you're going to figure out what's going on. No. So here we go. The angelic heart. When the angels' heart strings sing true, age improves the instrument's tone. 
So many years laboring, marriage, familiarities, mundane necessities, the quick step dancing to keep it together when we embrace. And I slip my hands down inside her tight fit Levi's, squeeze firm buttocks, snap strum her panty strings, heaven's harmonic quicken. Her Victoria Angel fingertips pluck the muscles. Ah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Pure tone. Thank you very much. Mississippi John heard this morning, and I swear it was the exact same as Chris's rendition. It was awesome. <laughs> okay, what we're going to do is um, now I'm going to take a beer break, and um, the lovely Julie Valin is going to come in. Please continue to go on. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys are all, each and every one of you are so lovely, and I'm just so pleased to see you all here. Some more than others, though. Huh? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and there's a gecko. And, um, okay, so I'll just read a few poems. You know, I don't want to bore the hell out of you or anything. Um, Five minutes, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Michael. He's the, look at what, look at, I'm going to bring sexy back. <laughs> I wish that Justin Timberlake song could come on right now. <laughs> We'd all have so much fun right now. Okay, I'm going to read a poem by um, lovely L. Rathal. Is that how you say her last name, Todd? Yeah. Rathal. And she's a Grass Valley poet, and she's wonderful, but she couldn't be here tonight. But we love her poem, and it's called Exit Song. I left in flip-flops and cursed the cold. The broken radio blinked instead of playing my exit song. I toasted us with stale water, wetting lips which tasted like you. My mind wondered whether I'd really follow through this time. A CD mix from a forgotten mistake on the empty passenger seat. Songs that once stung didn't anymore. At a red light, I put on waxy chapstick to erase your ch taste. The brakes screeched as I hit the driveway, hard, bit my lip, tasted blood, and there you were again. <laughs> Called, um, this is by me, be one of my, um, my favorite Otis Redding song. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, it's me up here reading, I might as well. When the song came on the radio today, Thursday morning blues, I thought of that night driving back from the poetry reading, and you were in the back seat with your girl, and everyone but me was drunk. You suggested that we stop at the dive bar off the country highway as a joke that became a dare. When we walked in, it was like in those movies when the new stranger in town swaggers into the local bar in his denim jacket and orders a beer by simply saying, I'll have a beer. And the bartender slides a beer across the bar, and it's always the right one. And everyone in the bar immediately either hates him or falls in love with him. But we didn't give a shit which one we were, because we filled the place perfectly. And by the end of the night, the bartender invited us to her 76th birthday party. Me and your girl made up a dance routine to that 80s Eurythmic song, and we kept ordering rounds of Corona lights, all of us drunk with everything the night had on us. 
So when the song came on the radio today, I thought of all of that. Those small moment, moments, how they can stack up to something big in the heart's memory. And how that night you played that song on the jukebox just for me and thought I didn't notice. Chris Harbour back there. Hi, Chris. Hi. He's also in the book. <laughs> and this, um, this is uh, in the book, um, and it's, it's my poem, and it's called A Bad Music Hostage. And it has a little intro. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. Foreigner. Stuck at the Jiffy Lube, I'm optimistic that poetry can be found anywhere. In the music of the cash register, in the oily hands of the young mechanics who smile at the pretty girl who just dropped off her car, in the promise of a date tonight between the counter girl and the manager. Can't stop now, she belts out, knowing every word to all the songs on the classic rock station. I've traveled so far to change this lonely life. <laughs> she croons while her ponytail sways. But after the Doobie Brothers, Hollow Notes, and now this foreigner song, I'm restless to find poetry in a more modern surrounding. <laughs> if it was 10.30 p.m., and the place was lit only by the neon open sign, and you were here with me, and my car was out there, sparkling and ready to drive us anywhere. I could endure the radio station's poor choices, and I would be happy to show you what love is. <laughs> A little treat from our special Tierra. Um, so just a second here, and she'll come on up, and everybody will love her. Um,
very special treat from one of my favorite poets and probably one of our most loved poets in Nevada County, um, Molly Fisk. Luckily there's a flashlight up here. <laughs> it's because you people are so young. Yes, you are. Well, I was young yesterday, but now I am old. <laughs> I'm the same age as the year I was born. Nobody can tell me what if there's a name for that or not. No, it doesn't, does it? It's a palindrome. Every call and choir, every song. Every call and choir, every song. Meadow lark, chainsaw, the dripping kitchen faucet. Every ball and socket, silent shifting as we raise our arms. In greeting or in prayer, in supplication. Each shed tear, moan of childbirth, muffled laughter, hush of revelation. Every note of radiance, explosive, muttered, harmonized, unsung. Every wary breath and daughter's whisper, every time we falter, all our praise and pain and rapture, someone hears it. So, um, Todd. Yes, Molly. Isn't, isn't Peter Wolf the lead singer for the Gia Giles band? Yes, he is. And didn't I kiss him on New Year's Eve of 1968 what? in Ipswich, Massachusetts? And I was only 13. But I looked a little older than that. And I think I was wearing a brown leather miniskirt. I don't want to upset you or anything, but I did want you to know. This is called Singing Canyon Sonnet. I have to say something about the blue grasses by the side of the road, the red rock rising behind them, a lacy kind of scrub juniper, yellow-green in afternoon light, dotted here and there up the broken slope, and walls scraped sheer, the red striated with bars of golden brown. I have to tell how two greasy ravens startled from their perch, made a raucous noise in the slot canyon. Their cries bounced upward, magnified by a hundred, where I had just been singing Amazing Grace, and they had not stirred, the only hymn whose verses I reliably remember. My boots raised puffs of fine red dust behind me walking back to the car, I should mention that the aspen leaves were thumbnail-sized and vivid, that anvil clouds quickly overtook the sun, that before I saw those 37 white-tailed deer, I was feeling unbearably lonely, and I might as well confess how acutely I missed the man I left at home, even though I drove 2,000 miles away from him to figure out which one of us to love. I wonder if he knows that he's up next. Look, he doesn't know. Okay, um, that's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's only for my own amusement. Um, <laughs> no, I love him very much. I always have. I always will. Tom Wilson. <laughs> Surprise! Sweet introduction, Julie. Thank you very much. Um, Julie really encouraged me to, you know, submit a poem here, and usually I wait forever for them, so writing one on demand was hard, you know, and uh, so I started going through songs and thinking what I could steal, and, um, <laughs> and then, you know, Bob Seger had the line I wanted, which I didn't know now, what I didn't know then, um, like that one, and then um, my other favorite was 
not in the song, but Willie Nelson saying, 99% of the people aren't with the one they love. That's what keeps the jukebox turning. <laughs> but anyway, so I got onto whatever it was, November 24th or whatever, and I just didn't have the poem, and it was 11.30 at night, and I said, I, it just doesn't come. And then I said, I promise, Jolie. And then it really forced me down to just an image in my head from 1977. I was in Jamaica. It's a young guy, and I was walking down the street. Yeah, very pretty. Old. And I was walking down the street, and I saw these beautiful, I saw these beautiful brown-skinned women walking, and I could just see in their walking where music really comes from. I understood the reggae beat just in their talk. So I've been chasing that ever since. <laughs> So anyway, I ended up saying I promised to do this, so I stayed up about all night and cranked it out, and um, and, and I was glad because ninety nine times. Yeah, so I, yeah, I know I edited it about ninety nine times, and uh, so here it is. It's just called Reggae Women. <clears throat> Before the beginning, only deep and endless silence. Before the journey, only the dark longing of arrows. The first sound. The, or, or the orgasmic cry becoming cosmos. The first love song, breath of wind on water. How long the soul waited for its voice to sing beauty into the adventure of time and space. On a summer day in Kingston, Jamaica, five creamy brown-skinned women danced down the street, laughing, singing, gesturing. In the rhythm of their bodies, you feel the walking bass line of the reggae beat. Sense the arrows at the heart of the world calling forth life. Hear the soul music alluring the living to the rapture of being here between eternities of darkness and silence. And, um, and I, will see, I will see the rest of my time with this all here. Okay, thank you, Tom. You're awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Reggae. We actually have a reggae song on our CD mix, so check it out. Okay, um, next up is quickly becoming one of my favorite female poets, and she's out of Sacramento, and she's way in the back, and she's beautiful. No, it's not. I mean, you are beautiful too, Janelle, and I love you very, very much. But um, it's Lit and Bell. So please give a warm welcome. Okay, I have two for you tonight. Um, first of all, I just want to say I'm so honored to be in this anthology with some of the poets that I have just looked up to for so long, like Molly Fisk over there. And um, so it's been a great honor to be included in the anthology. Thank you. And um, this first poem, have you guys ever been to like a little dirty little restaurant where the staff is all really rude to you. <laughs> but yet, you kind of like it. It's sort of charming. <laughs> so, this, um, this poem's about a little diner. It's like right off, when you go to Lodi, you get right off this exit, there's a little old diner. I don't even know if it's still there. Yeah. But um, this poem's called Crack of the Ass. <laughs> You've never seen a sky so sapphire blue. Hot air balloons are taking off in your chest. The diner where you sit was built in 1939. The menu is so torn and stained that you think it too must be from 1939. <laughs> the biggest bowl of oatmeal you've ever seen costs only $2.50. <laughs> you feel giddy. When you open up your mouth to speak, you just keep grinning like a fool. The man bussing tables is rather fat and he looks mean, and as he passes, his sweatpants are hung so low that you can see virtually the entire crack of his huge ass. <laughs> you find it charming. You want to hug the grouchy man. You want to kiss him on the mouth. Not because you love him, but because the sight of the crack of his hairy ass has brought such a surge of magic into your life. <laughs> An extra push of color and vibrancy into a landscape you thought would be forever peopled by imaginary ghosts. Thank you, chubby restaurant guy, you think, for sharing the crack of your huge ass with the rest of us. Thank you for being so enchantingly, endearingly grumpy. 
Thank you for never once wishing you were Brad Pitt or Hugh Hefner <laughs> instead of just plain you. And for the way you grunt when you slap the mop into the dingy, murky water in the pail. For the fact that you wipe the counter with a rag that is filthier than every other surface in this place. <laughs> and for the way you look right now, captured in this instant, scraping dried egg off of off-white plates next to the photo of the Model T. Our lives have steered us both somehow here, to these stools and trekkers and blue plate specials, these faux wood walls, and nothing could ever surpass the beauty of the way your irritable eyes meet mine as you carry away my flatware, still slick with my saliva. <laughs> Breathe in deep that lovely fried food smell, thick with a touch of pine salt. <laughs> we are real. Anything is possible. Everything is probable. And fate and time and all of the bad luck and good luck of our lives has sent us spinning irrevocably each toward the other. <laughs> Okay, just one more for you. Um, Molly and I have kind of a running joke about how many times we use um, different parts of the anatomy in our poems. This is called Your Cock. <laughs> so much of life is buoyant. Heat rises, smoke rises, steam rises, gases and vapors rise, the sun also rises. And though I go to bed each evening, still I rise. Jesus rose because you can't keep a good man down. Prices are on the rise and unemployment. When something burns, we say that it is going up in flames. Even a mafia hit, despite his cement shoes, yearns toward the surface of the bay. Elemental forces cannot be suppressed or contained. They struggle always onward and upward. My hand, your genes, defiance of gravity and death. <laughs> okay, next up... Wait, where is he? Oh, okay. Um, he's also in the very back, and he also hails from Sacramento, and we love him very, very dearly. B.L. Kennedy. <laughs> what more can I say? I almost didn't think I'd make it here tonight. But um, I have three pieces here. Um, I first heard about this. Todd said something about music. And um, uh, I remember um, being introduced to um, popular music by my Uncle Cy, who was like the main um, shipping clerk for Columbia Records. And, um, and um, he introduced me to people like Sinatra and Bessie Smith and Billie Holiday and Miles Davis. And so by the time I got to hear rock and roll, because when the cousins would let me in the kitchen, I said,